Hey guys, so it's finally time for me to share with you a shampoo bar recipe. I feel like I've been teasing this a lot on Instagram, but it's finally here. So these shampoo bars are specifically formulated for people with more normal to oily hair types. And don't worry, I'll be sharing more recipes eventually, but let's just start here. We're gonna be making a total of 170 grams of shampoo bar and I'm gonna be starting with a 50 milliliter glass beaker to weigh out the conditioning phase. So the conditioning phase consists of BTMS 50, which is a cationic surfactant. This is a conditioning agent to help moisturize and detangle the hair. So this is a really important ingredient if you're looking for some detangling and conditioning effects from your shampoo bar. And I added in 5.1 grams of the BTMS 50. Next, we're gonna be adding stearic acid. This functions as a protective conditioner, which leaves the hair feeling soft and light. And this ingredient also helps harden the bar. And I added in 5.1 grams of the stearic acid. So that is it for the conditioning phase. And we're gonna be heating this up in a water bath to melt down all the ingredients. So this next phase calls for a respirator because we're going to be working with powdered surfactants and you do not want to breathe these in. They go all over the room so you want to make sure you have a protective mask on. I bought this at Menards for like $20. You really need this if you're going to be making shampoo bars. So I'm using this 1000 milliliter container. It doesn't need to be heat safe, just any sort of container. A bowl really works best, but I don't want to use the bowls that I eat out of, which I don't recommend you either. So make sure you're using bowls that you only use to make skincare products with. So the first surfactant we're going to be adding in is SCI. And this is an anionic powdered surfactant. And this is a more mild and gentle surfactant as compared to other anionic surfactants. This surfactant is also known as baby foam and it's great for for all hair types. I also think it's important to mention that I'm using the powdered version of SCI, not the noodles. And this has a pH of 4.5 to 7, and it is an eco -surf surfactant as well. So I added in 68 grams of the SCI. Next is SLSA. This is a top performing sulfate free gentle powder surfactant. It's derived from sustainable feedstock. It's an excellent replacement for sodium lauryl sulfate. And this ingredient is also EcoCert and has a pH of 6.3. So I added in 57.8 grams of the SLSA. And next we're gonna be adding in some DL Panthenol. It's a film former that increases shine while hydrating the hair strands to be more elastic, more manageable, and healthier. It can thicken the hair shaft, making hair appear thicker. And I went ahead and added in 3.4 grams of the DL Panthenol. Now the last ingredient I'm adding to the powder face is this Pennsylvania Green Mica Powder. You can use any mica powder you would like here and just mix it in until it's well incorporated. So that's it for the powder face. Time to move on to our liquid phase. I'm using this 100 milliliter glass beaker. This doesn't need to be a heat safe container. I'm just using heat safe container here because it works. <laughs> so I'm starting with DLS. DLS is an anionic surfactant that is non-irritating and it doesn't strip the hair or the skin of its natural oils and it cleanses effectively and it helps leave the skin and the hair feeling soft and conditioned after rinse off. So the surfactant has a pH of 6 and it is EcoCert. I added in a total of 17 grams of the DLS. Next up is sodium lactate liquid. This is a natural humectant moisturizer and pH regulator produced from renewable, non-animal, plant-derived resources. It is even biodegradable. This ingredient is used to help harden our shampoo bars. And I added in 5.1 grams of the sodium lactate. The next ingredient is hydrolyzed rice protein. This has been shown to significantly increase total hair volume by up to 32%. It also adds natural shine and highlights to the hair by increasing the ability of the hair and skin to bind moisture. It leads to increased flexibility and tensile strength. I added in 3.4 grams of the hydrolyzed rice protein. Next up is vegakeratin. This is a vegetable alternative to animal keratin. It increases hair strength enhances elasticity, helps protect hair from harsh salon processes, makes hair look more healthy and shiny, and improves the combability of hair. I added in 3.4 grams of the veggie keratin. By the way, I'll be sure to have all these ingredients and equipment linked down in the description box. 
And lastly, I'm adding in a total of 1.7 grams of essential oil. I did a combination of lemon and tea tree. And then I just mixed everything together to make sure it was combined. And lastly, added in some Liquid Dermal Plus, 0.85 grams of it, as our preservative. And then just mix that in one last time. So now we can go ahead and grab our powdered phase and then just slowly pour the liquid phase into the powder phase while mixing in between each pour. And right around this time, I recommend switching to like a spoon or something because these glass skewers can break. Trust me, I've learned from experience. So you wanna make sure you use something like nice and hard that won't break like a spoon. Again, make sure you're using a spoon that you're not eating with, just one that's only used for making cosmetics. And after that's all mixed in, grab your conditioning phase from the very beginning of this video and pour in your formulation and then just quickly mix it in because it will start to harden. And I also always like to quickly wipe out the beaker because some of the waxes will melt to the edges of the beaker so it's good to wipe it out. So cleaning out the beaker later on is a lot easier. So now it's time to take a look at our formulation. So as you can tell, it should be really moldable, pretty hard and stiff, not stiff, but kind of like a Play-Doh consistency, but a little bit stickier. It will stick to your gloves a little bit at first, and if it is doing that, then you're gonna wanna let it sit for anywhere between like a half hour to an hour, and eventually it will not stick to your gloves anymore. It might stick just a little bit, but a little bit of stickiness is fine, just as long as it's not obnoxiously annoying and sticky. So I personally like to use a shampoo bar press for my shampoo bars. This has like a base here, and then it has the middle section here, which is where you actually put in your shampoo bar. And then you have the pressy press on top that you push into the shampoo bar press to actually press down the shampoo bar. So I'll link down below to where I purchased my shampoo bar press. I got it over on Etsy. So if you wanna purchase this, go buy it. And also uh, what I like to do is put parchment paper over top of the base like this. And then I wrap parchment paper around the pressy press parts to eliminate any of the shampoo bar from sticking to the shampoo bar press because I've tried it without parchment paper and it's just a little bit too sticky. So highly recommend the parchment paper. So now it's time to press our shampoo bars. And what I like to do is, oh wait, right here I'm showing you guys how it is sticking to my gloves just a little bit, but not enough to where it's annoying. But anyways, I like to weigh out the shampoo bars to make sure I'm making them right around the same weight. And both of these bars weigh about 85 grams because I did make a total of 170 grams of this formulation. So that means both of them can be 85 grams. That's right around three ounces. So I kind of like to just play with the uh, shampoo bar a little bit before I press it in. I kind of like to just uh, like mold it into a ball and sort of just like kind of condense it as much as I possibly can before I actually put it into the shampoo bar mold. And um, I sort of like rolled into like a weird ball thing and then I put it in and then I press it and then you just want to gently take off the base and as you can tell it did mess up just a little bit but you can actually just fix that with your fingers a little bit just by pressing it in and you know sometimes this happens sometimes things don't turn out perfectly beautiful but this other side did turn out perfectly beautiful that looks amazing just this other side isn't too pretty but like I said you can fix it just a little presses with your fingers and there you go this is how she looks not perfect but still beautiful I mean shampoo bars and like bath bombs you know they're never really that perfect they're made by hand you know so here is the next one like I said I like to just like roll it into a ball first and then press it down and here we go guys this one looks perfect so beautiful I guess second time is a charm here and honestly, you could repress the first one if you want to, but it looks good enough for me. And there you go. We got our two beautiful shampoo bars. And another tip for you guys, just to sort of like clean up the edges, is you can actually like roll on the table like this. And that will definitely like flatten out and just make the edges a little bit smoother. And there you go. Now you got your two shampoo bars and I'm cleaning up my mess. So the next thing you wanna do is actually place your shampoo bars in the freezer for about two hours. 
And then after two hours, you wanna let them sit on the countertop for a total of 24 hours, and then you can use them. Personally, I find better results letting them sit for about one to two weeks, because if you let them sit longer on your counter, they will actually last longer in the shower because they've had more time to harden. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to use them. So obviously the first thing you want to do is wet down your hair. And then after that, go ahead and grab your shampoo bar and just immediately start massaging it into your head. I really like to work around, you know, like the edges of my hair. And then you wanna rub it into the shaft part a little bit as well. And then just massage everything in till you get a nice, good lather. And then obviously just rinse it all out and then follow with your favorite conditioner. That is it. That's how you use shampoo bars. It's super easy and I love them and I'm like officially addicted to shampoo bars. Let me know what you guys think of this recipe. Let me know if you've ever tried shampoo bars. Do you like them? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Oh, also let me know what hair type you have so I know what type of shampoo bar to make next on my channel. So here's the whole formulation in percents for these shampoo bars. If you didn't know, I actually have a Patreon where I write blogs that go right along with the recipes I make here on my channel. So you can actually go over to my Patreon, sign up for my blog, and you can actually download and print out the written out recipes for all the products I make here on my channel. So then you can make your own like little booklet of Tara Lee recipes. I also post other random blogs here and there about skincare and formulating and stuff. I also post two exclusive videos a month and I just do all kinds of awesome stuff over on Patreon. So go check it out if you guys want. I'll have my Patreon link down below. You can always unsubscribe from my Patreon if you aren't getting what you're looking for. And speaking of Patreon, let's do my Patreon shout outs, shall we? So first we have Stardust Bath and Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com, Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Wallflower Wildflower at wallflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty here on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos. Sugared underscore pineapple over on Instagram. KAJ Bath and Body over on Etsy. Blue Mint Soaps at bluemintsoaps.com. And Satara here on YouTube. Go check out all my lovely patrons. Also, if you didn't know, I sell skincare products myself over on Etsy. I'll have all my patrons and my Etsy shop linked down in the description box. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed the shampoo bar recipe. I've been so excited to finally make shampoo bars here on my channel. So I highly recommend trying this out if you've been thinking about it. Also, like I said, let me know what your hair type is so I know what shampoo bar to make next here on my channel. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to talk to you guys again soon. Bye. I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life It's still the path that I've chosen